Hi, Ben here, and welcome back to another Work in Progress Wednesday. Today we're down in the craft lab and we're doing a little bit of spoon carving. We're preparing some spoon carving blanks because we're going to go and do a little TV appearance tomorrow doing a bit of spoon carving. So we're going to take plenty of blanks with us because we're not sure what timber will be available there. And it's also a great opportunity because we grew this silver birch. So this is some lovely silver birch that we planted maybe about eight years ago and we've started to harvest it for using for woodworking. So this isn't a particularly good bit. It's got a few too many knots. So we'll go back outside and we'll go and select another birch and we can get plenty of nice spoons from it. So we've just come outside the craft lab and these were some trees, like I say, that we planted about eight years ago. And we've already cut this once. You can see where this was the original stump and we felled that and then this is about three years regrowth so we've already had four stems come off that one stool effectively so don't fear about planting a tree and cutting it down people are sort of almost paranoid about cutting down trees is bad if you're cutting down in a part of a sort of sustainable management plan that's absolutely fine this is just like cutting your lawn basically so we're going to get some useful materials off this stool and once we cut these down that will then reshoot, so it's just going to be a constant renewable resource for us, which is great. So, like I say, only about sort of three, four years growth, so not massively, massive big diameter, but absolutely perfect for spoons, especially this section. So, we'll get a nice sharp pruning saw, one of the silkies, and we'll put a little cut in here. And you don't have to put a sort of proper felling cut in there or a bird's mouth in there because they're such small diameters, so you just do a little offset cut just to allow it to bend and the reason why I felled it high was I wanted to prevent any of those splits going down into the stool so now what I can do is take a really nice clean cut angling it slightly away from the stool the center of the stool of the uh, tree so that it helps it shed water and what that will do is it will stimulate that cambium layer now and that's where all those fresh new buds are going to come from. So, nice clean cut, and we've got some useful material to take back to the workshop. So we've come back into the craft lab, and we've brought some of that birch back in. Obviously, we can cut the main trunk into sections for those spoon blanks, but obviously, because they're only young trees, you will find that you get quite a lot of side shoots on those uh, small diameter trees. But don't think that that's just a wasted product, because me and Lois like to make these little coat hooks out of this section and you can also make some really nice little twig spoons out of those as well so even those are sort of useful bits of timber so don't discard it and of course anything that you don't use for making wood woodware out of woodcraft is going to be kindling for our wood burners so nothing is wasted really so i've got my nice sharp wildlife hatchet i did have a bit of a tr tr trouble finding it this morning but i managed to find it and i've given it a nice little sharpener and the first thing i'm going to do is split this in half because this is coppice grown, it has got a slightly offset pith to it. So I'm going to try and make sure that I split it in half with the axe, but also try and make sure that I get the best use out of the materials as well. So through the pith, standing to one side, got my wooden club, drop the axe in there. And what I like to do is actually place the axe back in that split from the side so I can actually apply a little bit of pressure. Because this was the very first section of timber near the sort of the base of the tree, it's actually quite tough and fibrous look. So having that extra bit of leverage helped to open up that split. So in theory, we should get two spoons out of that. I'm probably gonna use this lower half to start with. And I'm just gonna ax a little bit of that sort of rough cleft surface off. So put a few nicks in. Make sure that we put a few nicks to sort of stop the axe burying itself into those fibres. Flip it over. And you'll notice that I always turn the blank. I'm not ever, never working right from this top end where my fingers are. I always just flip the blank over. Now I've smoothed off that surface and I've made sure that I've got rid of any pith that's sort of on show because that will be a potential for where it wants to sort of check as it dries. And to keep a bit of consistency on these spoons, 
Um, I normally just freehand draw a centre line down and then just go, go random, let the piece of wood dictate what spoon it wants to be. But to try and keep a bit of consistency, I've actually made a template today. And I've found that uh, using a plastic milk carton, milk bottle, it makes this perfect uh, material for making a template that will go and bend with the grain of the, the wood. So I've got my little template and I've got a colourful pencil. I find that these these sort of coloured pencil crayons work really quite nicely on wet wood and it will help sort of show up. Obviously it might change a bit as we start carving but this helps to keep them all roughly the same size, same shape. And this works really good if, you're got, if you've got a commission for making a set spoon for a shop or somebody's asked you to make a load of like wedding gifts or something like that. At least everybody's got the same sort of style spoon then. So that's going to give me somewhere to work to. So we pretty much axed out that little spoon blank and you can see that we've got a nice little crank happening in this direction so obviously your soup or your porridge doesn't fall off the end of your spoon and we've got the out sort of side profile pretty much there and it's up to you how close you go to those lines with the axe if you're not that confident then obviously stop way beforehand but that's probably where I'd take it to with the axe before I'd actually get onto the knife work so best to put your mask on your axe. So that's safe and we can start to think about some knife work and this is the fun bit really this is where you can sort of lose hours of time just cleaning up that surface and getting some really nice clean cuts on that birch Now the only slight disadvantage of uh, the birch being so fresh is obviously the, the algae off the bark is coming off on the spoon itself but I'll rough this out let it dry and then go over it to get a real clean finish so we should be able to get rid of that green algae at that stage. But yeah, fresh birch and a sharp knife. Oh, it's just lovely, it really is. Get these nice long planing cuts. Yeah, really nice. So we've prepped some stages, almost like the evolution of the spoon journey from obviously the growing tree a few minutes ago. And then we've got one split in half with the spoon profile, one almost ready for cutting in these areas here where the bowl meets the stem of the spoon. One pretty much axed out, ready for the knife work to begin. This one is pretty much ready for just a little bit of finishing off and then the actual bowl of the spoon to be scooped out and then this is one that I actually finished the other evening. This is actually already a lot drier, I mean this is almost wet to the touch this but in a few hours really because you've got so much surface area that already starts to dry out so this is pretty much ready at the stage where you'd go over it, clean off any dirty marks, uh, get any algae that you've got on the spoon, maybe just clean up the bowl a little bit and then give that a nice oil now so yeah all made from silver birch that we grew here ourselves, me and Lois planted those all those years ago and it's amazing to see what small diameter timber you can use for making into woodenware. So that's all the preparation that I can do for the TV appearance tomorrow with Alan Titchmarsh, which is going to be really exciting. Never really done TV before, so a little bit apprehensive, but obviously we've done a few YouTube videos before, so hopefully it will be pretty much the same, just 
a bigger camera maybe. But uh, yeah, so it's been nice to prepare all those ready. I'm now gonna sharpen all my tools so they're razor sharp, ready to go. And we'll put a link, obviously, I'm not sure when this is actually gonna go live, this TV show, but we'll probably come back to this video and put a link when it is actually on the TV. So hope you've enjoyed what we've been doing today. And remember to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next week.